Do you want to take your After Effects renders from taking forever, only really using one core or one thread, and just really not being a good time, to using every ounce of your computer's potential and going blazing fast? Today's video is something a little different. I'm going to show you a tool that exponentially speeds up your After Effects renders and processing and allows you to do multiple compositions at once even. And it's pretty neat. And for now, it's free. Let's get started right after this. This video is brought to you by Nerd or Die. You knew there was going to be an ad in this video. I just had a baby. I got bills to pay. <laughs> Nerd or Die is having a beat the clock sale at the moment where you can get 25% off some amazing stream layouts. I even use the Nerd or Die uh, synth wave chat box for my streams because I really just had a hard time getting a chat box put together. They've got 15% off store wide, 25% off specific packages, and they even have specific stream overlays for as low as $2. Head over to eposfox.gg slash nerd or die to learn more and sign up today. So today we're taking a look at Render Garden. Render Garden is a plugin for Adobe After Effects, which as you can see can drastically increase your render speeds set you up for background rendering, rendering multiple compositions at once, and even network rendering on a much more efficient level. This is pretty cool, and I've actually done quite a bit of testing with it and found that it reduced a uh, alpha, the lower third that I show on my capture card reviews, where it has the time codes and the little tracking bar that renders out. I developed that in Adobe After Effects, render that out in an alpha channel video file, and then bring that into Resolve, it decreased the render time by 65% from like 13 minutes down to four or less, depending on what I'm doing. It's pretty freaking impressive. Now, before we go too much further, I do want to scroll up and point out, yes, the software can cost $99, but currently with the COVID situation, it is free for a little while. So it's definitely recommended that you check it out because if time is money for you, this will save you a lot of it. And I think it might be worth it. And so I want to show you how it works. So I've already installed it. You just download the installer, go ahead and install it, and then launch Adobe After Effects. After I show you how to set it up, we'll explain a little bit about how it works and how you might be able to work around it without actually needing it, even though I still think this is worth the time-saving measure. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that tracking bar project that I work on that I'm telling you about. Now, this is already made to be pretty efficient because it could take like 30 minutes on my original iteration of this. So I have a lot of it pre-rendered now to where I just changed the text, but we have... Uh, four different text layers and then this little bar that slowly transforms its you know duration over the course of a minute and then I have a kind of RGB separation uh, chromatic aberration filter applied here as well and that's pretty intensive to run in After Effects and typically this takes me like I said about 13 to 14 minutes to render out just this one minute little process of that bar moving because of the red giant effects they're just really really slow. I wanted to speed this up. So once you have installed Render Garden, you won't have anything show up, but you go to Window and then RenderGarden.jsx bin. And this pops up this little window. I recommend if it already embeds for you, popping it out for a minute because you need to click Show Preferences. And under here, you need to set up a couple things. Uh, it will probably prompt you when you first install it. You need to have Python 2.7 installed. I had 3.2, you still need 2.7. So go through the steps to install that. And when you relaunch After Effects, that should be detected. You also need FFmpeg for Windows. Uh, so if you already have that set up somewhere, they have a download button for you. But if you already have it, uh, browse and find your FFmpeg executable. I keep a specific folder for it since I'm constantly tweaking with FFmpeg, as you know, here on the channel. Uh, and then you also need a folder for your seed bank. This is basically like a cache location. Uh, I tested it both on a spinning hard drive, a fairly slow one at that, a uh, 5400 RPM WD red drive, and then a enterprise Intel NVMe drive, a slower gen, but you know, NVMe SSD and found about a five to 6% improvement in render speeds uh, based on moving from the hard drive to the SSD. Depending on how much bigger and more intense and dense your project is, you may actually see a bigger improvement. So I would recommend using a SSD or RAID where possible, not over the network. Uh, but if you're just throwing it on a hard drive because of space, that should be fine. But set that location as well. Go ahead and hit hide prefs. Now you can drag this into your panels wherever you need it to fit. So go ahead and tell your project to render. So I'm rendering this specific composition. I'm going to hit Control M to render it. The cool thing with this is you can queue up multiples at once. So what I had done is I had made, you know, all of these for a specific video and I queued them all up to render individually as you normally do. 
and it will render them using you know basically render them simultaneously as resources become available instead of the slow process of one at a time now my preferred way of rendering this stuff is a gopro cineform codec file uh, it's very cpu and gpu optimized uh, and then i have alpha enabled for it so i go ahead and change all of those i benchmarked with avi plus alpha as well as normal Cine or as well as cineform with alpha minimal differences in the results and so i go ahead and i already have my render settings set up here but instead of clicking render come over here and we're going to change some settings in the render garden panel so for seeds this is basically how many simultaneous processes that it runs and we'll go ahead and talk about how it works so typically after effects renders are mostly single threaded they are set up so that it can render one frame at one time with minimal resources to kind of get it going um, I don't I don't have the exact reasoning for this I have a whole video breaking down cores and thread usages and video editors and the like with Wendell that we uploaded last year you can check that link in the description we have some of that explained but basically due to the origins of After Effects and the kind of workflows in the industry that it's actually designed for it is mostly single threaded optimized it does not use many threads or cores for a single render at a time which means on a beefy machine like mine right here I have 32 cores 64 threads of processing power it's only using a few to do an individual render it's not using much at all so with this it basically chops it up so that it gives it basically creates multiple render instances so instead of one render that's only using say at most four threads at a time usually two threads to render out one frame and then move on to the next frame and then move on to the next frame and then the next frame it slices that up into the number of seeds that you plant here it's a garden metaphor whatever <laughs> uh but it divides up your render into those different seeds and so then it will render based on those seeds so for example if you set it to four seeds instead of one 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 it's doing four separate frames at a time and as each frame fin finishes it moves on to the next one and even if you have multiple different compositions queued up at the same time then once those threads finish this current composition even as others are rendering the previous one it'll start rendering the next composition and just go on until it's done rendering everything and then splices it all back together this is how multi-machine rendering or network rendering for render farms for both 3d graphics and after effects projects works as it scales it out to multiple machines and that's called a render farm the whole garden metaphor is that they're condensing that down down into a render garden because these days most computers have more processing power in one cpu than a lot of render farms had in many different computers so the recommendation is to set the amount of seeds based on half of the available cores in your processor if you go to task manager advanced view performance it'll tell you basically what core what core count your processor is this is core count not thread count i actually went ahead and tested it because i was like okay some people refer to threads as cores which one is it if i set it to 16 which is half the number of cores i have it renders really really fast if i set it to 32 which is half of the number of threads that i have it runs almost three times as slow as 16 threads because many of those seeds are basically waiting for resources to fill up and they all take longer and whatever so it will actually use you know based on your core count so find out your core count from example i have 32 cores so i set it to 16 seeds set it based on that here uh, they do have post render actions now this is pretty cool because you can set it out to render to a lossless avi which you can only do avi or quicktime formats with render garden as far as i know but you can set it to render because it's <laughs> another thing with after effects is that it is extremely slow to also compress while it renders because it does the rendering process really really fast for what it is in in the context of what it does but it's not so great at the compressing aspect so if you want a compressed h264 file you sh really should be rendering that out as lossless uncompressed first and then compressing it later for the best results well this will actually do that for you under post render action actions if you hit configure you can actually tell it to export a specific mp4 or quicktime based file after it has completed the render which will save you quite a lot of time I just have the dialog set up so I can see how long it takes to render once you have your seeds configured and your post render actions configured go ahead and hit plant the seeds now this will spawn a bajillion yeah, well however many seeds base you have uh, after effects render nodes that will then start rendering through your scene one frame at a time per seed looking at numbers really really quick I saw an improvement of 65% reduction in render speed going from just the normal standard render mode in Adobe After Effects for AVI or Cineform with Alpha down to render garden mode with 
16 threads. Uh, that took about 286 seconds for the 16 thread, whereas 32 thread took 645 seconds. So big difference there. Definitely stick with half of your core count. And then I also tested hard drive versus SSD for where the seeds are located, because as I explained, that's basically a cache. That's where it renders the files to first, and then it will copy them back to your final export location. So having a faster throughput on both situations is going to improve your speeds a little bit. I saw about a 5% reduction in speed there for this specific test. Now, this will only really benefit you in projects where you have a very slow uh, render pipeline in the first place. For example, uh, I was testing out a nerd or die promotional thing and it was only 1080p and my computer finished it in eight seconds. Setting up render garden took longer than eight seconds for it to like kick in and get going. So ultimately there was no improvement there, but for big dense projects that take forever or multiple compositions at once, this is fantastic. Now, all this whole program is doing is something that you can sort of technically already do. Uh, my buddy Dylan who works on OBS actually does this a lot for his After Effects projects is what this program does is it goes into your program there in your After Effects program files. There is a specific uh, command line program called AE render. And these are just render instances for your video rendering right here. AE render.exe. You can use the command prompt to launch that with your project name, your composition name, your export template settings, all of that. And you can basically just keep spawning multiple of these, just running it with the, you know, with a batch file with multiple of those. Queue up 16, in my case, of these things, and it will more or less do exactly the same thing. But you've got to manually type all that out and configure it based on each project and blah, blah, blah. And you have to manage it all manually. And this saves you a lot of time by you just basically once you set it up once, you just hit plant the seeds. And then once you have finished your render, it will just stay there in the background in case you need to just keep rendering more and more projects. You don't need to relaunch everything. As long as you leave all the command prompt windows open, you just hit plant the seeds again and it will start rendering. Now, if you do have a really beefy processor, say the 3990X, uh, which has 64 cores instead of 32, uh, you can only go up to 16 seeds at a time per, or, you know, per section here. But if you hit launch more gardeners, it will actually ask you how many more you want to launch. And so you can launch another 16. Overall, this is a pretty phenomenal tool. I waste a lot of time. Like my last capture card review took like four hours just to render all of the little lower thirds with the tracking bar for the time codes at once. Four hours of waiting on this. Whereas with the render garden, it takes at most like 20 minutes. It's a drastic improvement in render speed. And there is a lot of stuff that I've attempted to do in After Effects and kind of had to cut for specific videos because it was taking too long to produce and render. This definitely unlocks your workflow and speeds things up tremendously. And I, I hope you check it out. Time is money, especially, you know, on a daily grind workflow where you're you know checking out client work for money. If you do a lot of design work and things like that, where you constantly need to be rendering out proofs and whatever uh, within After Effects, this can save you a lot of time. And 99 bucks for this kind of plugin is honestly a steal. Some of the stuff costs thousands of dollars. So this is pretty nice. And if not, you can sort of figure out how to do it yourself based on this because it's only using supported functionality already built into Adobe After Effects. Now, they do have a way to continue launching more and more nodes on other computer systems. This does require an even beefier project that could actually take advantage of that. You need to have your central storage on a shared node or a shared file location that all computers can access evenly. You got to have your plugins and your fonts and stuff like that synced across all your computers. But you can do that as well. There's a couple little advanced things, but overall, this is what I'm going to be using going forward because it's literally saving me a crap ton of time. And for until the human malware situation goes away, it's literally just free extra processing power. So why not? Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm your host, Ebos Fox. I don't usually call myself a host. I'll see you next time.